Hey friends, it's Christy. Welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to be making a card using Lawn Fawn's Critters in the Desert, Penguin Party, Ugly and Bright, Merry Mice, Say What Holiday Critters, and Holiday Party Animal. So I've stamped those images out on Spectrum Noir Ultra Smooth Premium White Cardstock with Lawn Fawn Jet Black Ink, and I'll be coloring with my Copic markers. I'm starting with my tortoise, and for his body, his head, legs, and tail, I'm going to use some olivey green tones. I'm using YG91, YG93, and YG95. Starting with that YG95, I laid in some shadows on the underside of the head and throat, and then the back of the legs and the underside of the tail. Then I'll blend that out with the YG93 for the mid-tone and fill in the rest with the YG91 for a highlight. And then I'm going to switch up to some brown tones for his shell. I'm using E53, E55, E57, and E59. So I'll again start with my darkest shade, the E59. I'm going to add that to both the left and the right on the shell. And then I'll also just draw in all of the little lines that are there and kind of emphasize those with that darkest shade. And then I'll start to blend that out with the E57. Just going over the edge of that E59 to kind of break it up and make it more smooth as it blends into the next shade. And then I'll come in with the E55. For the rim of the shell, I'm just going to fill in with the E55, but for the scales on top of the shell, I'm going to leave some space for that lightest shade, which is the E53. So I'll just fill in all of those little spots on the top with that to kind of just give them a bit more dimension. And then I'm going to keep that E53 and E55 and add in the E51 and I'll do the sand that is beneath my cactus with these three shades. Then for the rest of the cactus, I'm going to switch to some darker greens. I'm using G21, G24, and G28. So I'll place the shadows on the inner side of the arms and then the outer part of the main section of the cactus using that G28. And then I'll come in with my mid-tone, the G24. And again, just scrub over the edge of that darkest shade to break up the line that it leaves behind. I don't want to have like any harsh lines. I want to have a nice smooth blend as I transition from shade to shade. And then I will come in with the G21, which is my lightest, and I will fill in any remaining white space with that. And I really love the look of these three shades together for that cactus. And then I'm going to move on to some E30s. I'm using E31, E33, and E35 for my Fennec Fox. So I'm starting with the E35, and since he's facing forward, I'm doing my shading on his face completely even, so it's the same on both the left and the right. His body is slightly shifted toward the right, so my shading is mostly falling on the left, and then on his tail, it's just at the base where it joins the body because the light would not be able to hit there as well. So once I had did that with the E35, I blended out with the E33, and then I'm filling in with the E31, everything except for his muzzle and his inner ears. For those, I'm gonna bring the E30 in and just do a quick, simple layer of that. And then I am also going to use these shades in my rocks. So I'm just adding a little bit of color. I'm gonna mix it up with some grays as well to just make them look a bit more interesting but I thought it would be fun to throw some of those browns in the mix as well. And then I'm gonna move on to some warm grays. I felt like the warm grays would go best with the color palette that I'm using for today because it's more of a desaturated color palette that would work great in the desert. So I'm using W00, W1, and W3 and adding some of that in with my rocks and just blending that into the brown tones. And then I also am going to outline my speech bubble. 
and I'm using the W3 first. I'm shading it a little bit more heavily on the left hand side and that is just because I stamped the sentiment just a little bit off center and so it's shifted a little bit toward the right so I'm balancing that out with the shadow being on the left. I'll also use the W1 and W00 for the white parts of my Santa hat and my candy canes. And I'll leave a little bit of white space on all of those as well for the highlight so they don't look too gray. Then I'm going to bring in W5 and W7 and start to shade my Roadrunner, adding that W7 to the back of the tail and the tip of the wing. And then blending forward with the W5. I'm also going to throw some W5 onto the beak. Then I'll bring in W3 to finish all of those parts out. And then I also decided I wanted to have a little bit of that same color on the top of the head. And I was looking at pictures on Google for figuring out where to add those colors on my Roadrunner. And then I'm going to use these same shades for my Scorpion that I added in the W9. So I'm starting with that for him. I'll blend out with the W7 and then I'm going to use the W5 for the highlight making sure that that is the color that's going to go over the face so that you're still able to make out their features. If you think this is a little bit dark you could also add a little W3 over the face instead. And then I'm going to use E40, E41, and E42 for the rest of my Road Runner coming in from the back toward the tail with that E42 and then blending forward on the body. And I also threw in a little bit extra of those darkest two shades on the underside of the belly. Then for my agave plants, I'm going to use BG93, BG96, and BG99. I really, really love these kind of cool toned greens. They're very desaturated and super fun. I think they work perfect for agave plants. So I'm using the BG99 first, blending out with the BG96 for those, and then I'll fill in with the BG93. There's also a larger version in this stamp set, but I'm just using the smaller ones today because they just fit into the scene the best. So I just stamped out three of the same image. And once I have those done, I'm going to switch to some pink tones so that I can give my critters some rosy cheeks. I'm going to use R11, R20, and R22. So for the Fennec Fox, I'm using the R22. I added that to his nose and the inside of the ears. And I also did the cheek on my tortoise and my Roadrunner, and then blended out with the R11. For the Scorpion, I knew I needed the R22. And then I also added a bit of that to the tortoise and the Fennec Fox because I didn't think it was quite bright enough with just the R20. And then I'm going to move on to red. I'm using R24, R29, and R39 for my Santa hats. Yes, you heard that right. I'm creating a Christmas in July card. So um, that's why we've got all of these little holiday images mixed in with our desert images. So I am super excited to be doing this little mashup today. I love this Critters in the Desert stamp set. And, uh, you know, Christmas comes to the desert too. So they should get to have their holiday festivities. So I did my Santa hats and I also did the stripes of my candy canes. I'm going to do some of the ribbons on the gift. And the third gift I'm going to do with red uh, gift wrap. So I'm going to do the two bows first, just putting the darkest color on the bottom of the top gift and then in the center of the gift that's facing toward the viewer. And then, like I said, that third gift, we're going to have red gift wrap and I put my shading at the bottom blended toward the top. I'm also going to do every third bulb in my string of lights. So I'm just doing one and then skipping two and then doing one, skipping two, doing one. 
So it worked out even that we have the red on the ends, which is kind of nice. Then I'm going to bring in another green, but this one is a little bit brighter and more Christmassy. So I'm using G12, G14, and G16. And I was really thinking about which gifts I wanted to be in what colors. So I decided to do the small gift at the top in this green combo. I'm also going to do the gift that is facing toward the viewer with this combo. I wasn't sure if I wanted them both to be green or not, but in the end I decided to go for it. And I did the ribbon on my red gift with this combo as well. And I'm going to do every other, well, every third light in my string of bulbs again. So I just did the one that's immediately following the red, so that leaves me with two. And then I have two left over that we'll get to in just a little bit. Still really thinking about whether or not I was going to leave this gift white or if I wanted it to be green, but in the end I decided to go with the green. So just filling that in. And then I am going to move on to my white. So I'm just going back to my warm grays that I'd already used, the W00, W1, and W3. And I'm gonna do the star on my cactus. And that's kind of why I was holding off. I thought about doing the star on my cactus in yellow, but then it would have been the only yellow thing on the card. So I decided to just make it a silver star instead and finished off my lights. Then I grabbed a black Sakura jelly roll pen and went over the eyes of my critters that had their eyes open and trimmed these images out with their matching dies. For my background, I'm taking the Desert Canyon backdrop and die cutting that out of some Bristol Smooth Surface cardstock, just making sure that that is lined up perfectly, and then I'm going to hold it in place with a bit of post-it tape and run that through my die cutting machine, and then I will have these, uh, the background, and then there's also the sky piece, which I'm going to pop out and use a different portion for the sky for today, but you could also just pop that sky piece out and color that if you wanted to. I'm going to start with my background though and I'm going to use some antique linen down at the bottom to be my desert sand. So I'm just starting down there and I had like a little strip of paper that was like right on the edge of the die cut since this was like the perfect size for that die cut so it was kind of peeling away as I was blending but it all came off so it was all fine. Um, so yeah, adding that antique linen on at the bottom and then I wanted to darken that up with some gathered twigs just to go a little bit darker there. So I'm going to bring that on from the corners and the sides and just blend that into the antique linen. Really emphasize that stitching detail around the bottom edge and the sides there. And then I'll go back to my antique linen blending tool and just smooth out those colors as they transition into each other. I'm creating a nighttime scene, so I wanted the edges to be a bit dark. Then I'm gonna bring in that gathered twigs for the rocks at the top of the scene. And I'm gonna go a lot darker with those. So this is just my initial kind of base layer to give them a little bit of color. And then I am also going to do like the top edge, which will eventually be black, but I just thought I would go ahead and add some brown on there so it would be underneath. So once I'm happy with that, I'm going to bring in vintage photo. Like I said, I wanted to go a bit darker and I want the lightest part of the rocks to be the part that's facing the center. I'm going to have like a light source, well it's going to be the star that's on top of the cactus, but it's going to be in the center of the sky, almost as if there's like a moon glow or something behind that cactus. So the center of the scene is going to be where the light source is. So then I'm going to bring in black soot and darken that up even further. Since this is a nighttime scene, I wanted to make it look really dark and moody as if maybe these critters are decorating and waiting for Santa to come. So um, I'm adding that on the top and then down the sides and also to each of the individual rocks as the part that is facing away from the light source. 
So just carefully adding that in and, you know, um, blending that into the other shades so it looks nice and shadowy. And then I can set this piece aside and I'm going to move on to my sky. So I've got another piece of Bristol and I'm going to start with some salvage patina in the center of this sky. This is going to be my lightest shade. So I'm just blending that on in kind of like a circular motion as, this, as if this is like the, the moon glow. And then I'm going to bring in Uncharted Mariner, which is quite a bit darker, but I'm going to just work back and forth between them to make sure I have a good blend. But I'm starting by just blocking in where I want that Uncharted Mariner on the top and the two sides. I'm not worrying about the bottom because it'll be covered up by the other layer of this background. And then I'll just go back to the Salvage Patina and kind of add a little bit more of that. And then I'll go back to the Uncharted Mariner and bring that in and just work between these two shades until I have a look that I'm happy with. Distress Oxide inks are all about layers. They blend so much better the more that you add in, in and, you know, the more you, that you keep blending. So it's just, you know, it takes a little bit of time to get a look that you like, but it's totally worth the effort because... They just have such a beautifully smooth finish. I really love them. Then I'm going to bring in the black soot again, and I'm going to bring that in at the top and the two sides once again so that we have those shadows kind of creeping in. But I'm being careful not to bring it in too far. I still want you to see plenty of the beautiful blue night sky. So I'm going to go back to that Uncharted Mariner and blend between these two shades. And you can see it doesn't work great right away. That's the whole thing. You just got to just keep layering until everything kind of comes together. So I'm just working back and forth now between all three shades, making sure that each of those transition areas are smooth how I want them. And then once I'm happy with this, I'm going to distress it a bit. I want to create a beautiful starry sky. So I'm adding some water to an acrylic block, picking that up with a thin paintbrush and tapping that all over the background. I don't want as many speckles in the center where that kind of moon glow is. So I'm mainly concentrating it to the sides, but um, if a little bit gets in there, it's not a big deal. Then I'll blot that up with a paper towel and I wanted to add a little bit more in those darkest areas. And then I'll just blot that up once again to lift some of that color. Then I'm going to bring in some Dr. P.H. Martin's Bleed Proof White. It's just like a white acrylic paint. Mine's gotten a little bit hard over the years, a little bit thick. So I'm just taking a bit of that and adding it to some of the water that was left over on that block, mixing it up so it's a bit more fluid. And then I'm going to tap that over the background as well. And I want really fine spray because I want this to be stars so I want it to look like you know they're really far away and there's just so many of them so again I'm mainly concentrating in the darkest areas but I don't mind if a little bit gets in the center and then I'll just set this piece aside to dry once it has I will pop it in my misty because I want to heat emboss my sentiment I'm going to treat that with a rabbit hole designs powder tool because I want to make sure that none of my embossing powder sticks to the distress oxide or the Dr. PH Martin. So you got to make sure it dries in between. And then I'm going to stamp my sentiment in Versamark ink, which is just a clear sticky ink that works great for embossing because it really grips a hold of that powder. I'm using Lawn Fawn white embossing powder. I just keep it in this large tub. So I'll make sure that's really well coated, tap off any excess from the back. And then I've got my heat gun heating up over on the side for about 30 seconds to a minute. And I bring it to both the back and the front of the cardstock to try to eliminate some of the warping. I did get a little more warping today than I sometimes do. So um, we'll get to that later on. But now moving on to the inside of my card, I'm using some Lawn Fawn Mermaid cardstock and stamping in Peacock ink. I'm using the little snake from Critters in the Desert and then I've added a gift and a sentiment that says, have a cozy holiday. So now I'm ready to start assembling and 
I am going to take this background and glue it to this sky piece. And my glue is running a little bit empty. I need to refill it. I have the refill bottle. I just need to sit down and do it. So it's a little bit hard to squeeze out right now because it's just getting low. And when it gets low, I feel like it gets a little thicker because there's more air in the tube. But anyway, so I am just adding that glue. And then again, I had just a little bit of those little frayed edges from the edge of the die. So I just kind of picked those off and then I'm lining that up over top of the background, smoothing that into place. And then I'm also going to glue this flat to my card front. This is gonna make it really nice and easy for mailing. And also because that cardstock is a bit warped, I think just gluing it straight to the panel helps to flatten it out a bit. So I'm really kind of just smoothing that into place and trying to make sure that it's nice and flat now that it's glued down. Then I can bring in my images and I'm gonna start with my cactus cause that's kind of the center of my scene. By the way, you'll notice that I did not color in those little agave that are in the die cut. And that's because when I laid out all of my images, I thought they were all gonna get covered up. In the end, you can kind of see the one that's behind the cactus, but it's fine, it's not that noticeable, I think. But anyway, the other two are getting covered up by the large tortoise and the rock. So I'm just laying out these largest images and kind of figuring out the placement, and then I can start to adhere everything down. Well, these main images anyway, these are kind of the, the placeholders, and then everything else is just accessories that'll go around them. So I'll have my tortoise over on the left-hand side and my fennec fox is going to be over on the right, sitting on top of that large rock. Since we have the large tortoise, I wanted to kind of balance that out with the weight on the right-hand side of the card with the large rock and the fennec fox on top. And then I wanted the fennec fox to be the one that was saying the warm wishes. So I'm gonna give him the speech bubble. I'm gonna add that now so I know that I have room for it. And then I'll take my little um, agave, one of my little agaves and add that in front of the large rock formation to kind of push that back further in the scene. And then I'll add my scorpion in front of that. And then he's gonna be kind of pushing a little gift towards the center of the scene as if they're all kind of bringing their gifts and things around the Christmas tree to celebrate. I'll have my Roadrunner kind of dashing across the scene in front down below. Just go ahead and adhere him and make sure everybody's on there nice and straight. And then I can just start to fill in the rest of the scene with the other little details. I'm going to give one of these Santa hats to my tortoise. And um, that's when I wanted to try to cover up that other little die cut agave with the colored one. But because I had already glued my cactus down and, and didn't add it there, there was no way to pull that cactus back up. So I just had to put it down in front, but I like where it is there too. And then I've got another smaller Santa hat. That one's going to go on the fennec fox. So we have that nice pop of red over there as well. I'll add two more gifts on top of the tortoise's back. So he's kind of carrying those in on his nice strong back. He's got that little pile of gifts to bring to the celebration. And then I've got another agave plant that I'm going to put further back in the scene behind the fennec fox's tail that wasn't quite glued down all the way so it was easy to slip in back there and just adds a little extra prop of green in that background towards the back of the scene. I'm gonna give one of the candy canes to the fennec fox and the other one I'm going to have in the Roadrunner's beak. So I'll just kind of tuck that underneath the beak, slide that in there quickly. And um, then I've got the small rock formation. I'm gonna make a little cluster over on the right hand side since we've got a cluster on the left with the agave and the scorpion and the gift. And then my camera died when I was decorating the cactus. So anyway, I put the string of lights and 
the star on top and then I felt like the left hand side was out of balance since we had that big white speech bubble. I felt like we needed something else larger and white on the left hand side. So I just colored another gift. I had to cut it down a little bit because the other gifts were kind of glued down so it was hard to squeeze back there. Um, and then it kind of trimmed off the shading that I had done. So I just went back and added a little bit more in there using the same warm grays that I'd used for everything else. So it was the W3, then the W1, and then the W00, and left some white space so it still looks like a white gift. And then of course I needed to bring in a little bit of sparkle, especially on a Christmas card. So I'm going to grab some Stardust Stickles and start adding that into my scene as well. I'll put it on the star on top of the cactus and then also on the string of lights. I'm going to put it on the white parts of my Santa hat and on all the bows of my gifts. And that is going to finish this one off. So I will lift that up so you can see all of the detail and hopefully catch some of the sparkle and shine and give you another peek at the inside. I really hope you guys enjoyed this one. If you did, go ahead and hit that like button and leave me a comment down below. Let me know if you have started your Christmas cards yet this year or when you usually do start them. I would love to know. Subscribe to my channel if you haven't already and ring that notification bell if you'd like to be alerted whenever I post new videos. All of the products I use will be listed and linked in the description bar in case you'd like to pick up anything for yourself. And if you'd like to keep watching, here are two more videos I thought might also interest you. Thank you so much for spending your time with me today. I hope you had a good one, and I will see you soon in another video. Bye-bye!